Hello everyone! Today we are going to learn the basics of the Postman tool. Let's begin. If you open the Postman for the first time, you see something like this. The screen with a lot of buttons, controls, sidebars, dropdowns, etc. It is intense and overwhelming for the newbie. If I told you what each element is responsible for, you wouldn't watch the video to the end. And you would quit the course and the rest API testing. Maybe even would stop to drink coffee for a while. Instead, this video will be short and sweet. We'll talk about requests, responses, and the collection sidebar. And later in the course, we will learn more and more features. For example, in this video, we will skip the params, authorization, and headers tab. But later in the course, each of this will have a separate video. In this tutorial, we are going to talk only about the basics. So you'll be able to send the request, check the response, and save your data. We'll go with baby steps. Even if the screen is minimized and only the request part is selected, still, it is overwhelming. Let's go from the left to the right. But before we do this, it doesn't make sense to learn the request structure in the Postman without the real request data. Because of this, let's start with the story. I believe the real-life scenarios are the best for these tutorials. We have this kind of story. It has the image of the request, the image of the response, and the CURL. Not the best story, but not the worst, believe me. And we are especially interested in the CURL. If you are new to API testing and do not know what it is, don't worry, you don't need to know this for now. You just need to know how to use CURL instead. And right now I will tell you about the feature which a lot of people ignore and struggle a lot with REST API testing. The import feature in the Postman. It is not the easiest feature, so it can look complex for people who are new to API testing. Don't be scared and watch the video till the end. It will be simple, I promise. First of all, let's copy the CURL data. And what is important here is to select everything from the letter C to the last single quote. Copy it and let's go to the Postman. On the Postman screen, you need to find the Import button. It is here and click on it. The Import dialog will be opened, as usual with a lot of tabs. In this dialog, you need to find a click on the Row Text tab. Then you will have the text field where you can paste your CURL. Let's do it. Here we go, and now we can click Continue. And, and we have got an error. The error doesn't have a lot of details. A general error that something went wrong. And that is why a lot of people don't use this feature. But I did that on purpose. You know, in a lot of tutorials, everything looks so easy. And then when you try it on your own, nothing works. I don't want to share this kind of tutorial. Instead, I want to help to resolve the basic issues which can happen on your way. I didn't copy the CURL properly. I skipped the last quote. Let's do it accurately this time. I skipped all steps till the continue button. Now we have the quote at the end of the CURL. Let's check what happens when you click the continue button now. This time, the request data is successfully imported. We can see the URL, the headers, and the method. Now we can learn the basic controls of the Postman. But before that, I want to show one more feature related to the CURL. Believe me, it will help you a lot in the future. The feature is to generate the CURL by yourself. If you will click here on the Code button. Then, the CURL will be generated on the right sidebar. Because a lot of project developers can share the CURL with you or ask you to share the request you send. And this is one of the easiest ways to do it. That's it. Let's go to the basics now. Here is the cup of coffee for you. Let's have a coffee break for a second. From now on, we will have coffee breaks each time when we finish talking about big topics. Or after stressful situations. Like you wanted to learn the basics of the Postman, but instead you need to Google what is CURL. The second is over. Let's go to the response now. 
Some things which you see on the screen we had partially discussed in previous videos, like request method and URL. Other things are still new for you, like parameters or headers. And I promise one of the next videos will be related to those. But currently our purpose is to learn the basics of the Postman tool. Because of that, let's concentrate on the familiar stuff. The request method and the endpoint. Let's step-by-step -step discuss what we have here. First of all, we have the request method dropdown. If we click on it, we can see a lot of request methods available there. There are four, let's say, the main methods. Get, post, put, and delete. These four you will meet much more often than the others. When we import the CURL, the get method was selected in this dropdown. So we won't change the method and we will leave it as it is. Let's move to the next line. And the next line is the address bar. It is the same as you have seen in the browser, so you can enter the URL here. Similar to the websites, the API have endpoints. The endpoints are the same as the website address, as we discussed in the previous video. You have the domain name and the protocol, and the path is mostly called the endpoint in the API world. So when somebody says the endpoint, they can refer to the entire URL or only to the last part. It depends on the context. Actually, that is all what we need to send the simple request with the postman, the method and the URL. There are much more complex APIs with params, authorization, headers, body, cookies, etc. All of those are important, but to talk about those now will be too comprehensive and intense. We are going to have the separate meaningful videos about each of those in the future. For now, let's send our request. We click on the blue Send button. And we see more buttons, dropdowns and data. It means that requests were sent and processed and we received the response back. Let's check the response in the same manner we checked the request before, step by step. The main thing is the response status code. We have discussed those in the previous video. In our case, it is 200 OK, and it means exactly the same. OK, everything is fine. The response is successful. In reality, developers can return their response even if everything is not OK at all. But we will talk about it later. The second important thing is the response body. It is displayed in this area. These buttons, pretty, row, preview, just change the view of the data we received. As usual, we are going to have a separate video about JSON. And we are going to test a lot of different response bodies. For now, it is enough to know that the response code is displayed here and the response body is displayed here. The same as with the request, there are a lot of other parts of the response, like cookies, headers, response time or size. But again, all of them will be discussed in a separate video. The request and the response pair is the most important part for a tester who is new in REST API testing. Mostly you will send requests, check responses, and that's all. This happens because people are not familiar with a lot of cool features in the Postman, like parameters, tests, runner, templates, scripts, console, etc. And in our course, we're going to get familiar with all of those step by step. For now, let's check the basic one, save your request. Just do not forget about small breaks. Stand up, look in the window and give some rest to your body and mind. And then back to the Postman. If we will check the main screen again, we can see the orange circle on the request. It is the important one. It means that the request is not saved. Sometimes to send even a successful request can take a lot of time and effort. Let's click on the Save button on the right side of the screen to save the request data. And another complex and a big screen is displayed. And you can see that the Save button is disabled. The postman doesn't allow you to save request by itself. You need to create the collection and then save the request to the collection. And Postman has created a default collection for us, new collection. To start it can confuse, but in reality it is a simple rule. The collection is the same as the folder, and the request is the file. To be able to save the file, you need to select in which folder it will live. Instead of selecting the default collection, let's create our own collection. 
Just click on the new collection button. And the new folder is displayed. We need to set a collection name. I will name it Pet Store as it is in the domain name of the API. Then we need to click on Create button. For some reason, the Postman team decided that we don't need to be informed that a collection is created, so it can be confusing, but in reality it is created and the breadcrumbs showing that we are already inside the Pet Store folder. Now, when we are in the folder, we can say our first request. Just click on the Save button. And again, it can confuse a bit for the first time. You are not informed if the request is saved. And where you can find it? For the new people, all of this can be annoying. But after a couple of days of using the Postman, you'll like it. It has its reasons why it is created this way. First of all, you can see that the orange circle is gone. It means that the request is saved. For example, if I will change anything in a request, let's say change the 1 to 2 in the path, you can see that the orange circle is there again. It means that there are changes in the request. And if you will click on the Save button, this time there won't be any pop-up. The orange circle will be gone. And you can see the tooltip, no new changes to save. It means that the request is saved. But where we can find it? In the left sidebar. And it is the last thing we are going to discuss today, if we will expand the sidebar. The Postman screen will show more information and become even more intense. There are a lot of useful things in the left sidebar. And again, most of them are ignored by a lot of testers. The one which is in use by all of the testers, I believe, is the Collections tab. This is the one which is open now. You can see collections here, folders, and our folder is the Pet Store. And you can see the saved request here. The Collection tab in the left sidebar is the place where you can manage your requests and collections. You can create, view, edit and delete those here. And again, we will play with it more in the next videos. I think for now you can have the last cup of nice coffee. Today you have learned how to send the request with the postman, where to check the response, and how to save the request in collection. That's one small step for you, one giant leap for the REST API, because the new REST API tester is born today. Thank you for watching. If you like coffee or coffee shop, leave a thumbs up, if not thumbs down. See you in the next video.